There are a lot of IVF videos out there where people go through the very nitty gritty details of their IVF experience, which is very helpful in a lot of ways, but in some ways you might just be interested in kind of the overall bullet point takeaways of going through IVF, what to expect, what were some surprises. So I wanted to do a video where I kind of kept it into like a bite size video infographic, if you will, of my own personal IVF journey. This video is sponsored by MeUndies. We will talk about them later. I will say that having comfortable loungewear and underwear is like one of my top tips for getting through IVF successfully. This is my experience, my personal experience with me and my doctors. You may have a very different experience, so make sure to take any advice that you get from any video you watch, including mine, and run it by a medical professional first. I also think it's important to say that I did not do an IVF transfer, which means they went in and retrieved all of my eggs and then fertilized all of those eggs, but we did not take any of those eggs that were fertilized and put them back in. We have them on ice. So IVF is kind of like a whole process. Really my process was more of an egg retrieval process, which are the hormones, the shots, the surgeries, that type of thing. My first tip is to not be afraid of administering yourself shots. During my IVF month, I ended up taking 47 shots in my belly, which sounds crazy crazy after the fact to think about, but while the process is going, you're taking you know two to four shots a day, depending on what day you're on. It's a lot easier to think about it in terms of, I just have to get through today's shots. That's all I have to think about today. And then you get to the end and you're like, oh my gosh, I just took 47 shots. The last one, we did it. It's over. And I know shots are scary for a lot of people. And I told Matt, I'm like, you have to give me the shots. There's no way I can give myself the shots. You guys, it actually, don't tell Matt, was a little bit better when I gave myself the shot. The needles, all of these needles are like super tiny needles. They barely hurt, especially if you're icing. And there was just something about just like not even looking and doing it that made it so much easier than seeing Matt, who is not a trained medical professional, coming at you. <laughs> With the needle, it's a lot more terrifying, or at least it was for me. My next tip is to give yourself a treat to look forward to. So every night after I was done with my shots, I gotta eat an ice cream sandwich. It was like my one thing, I was like, okay, if I can get through this, I'm gonna have an ice cream sandwich. I know it's very elementary school going to the dentist vibes, but I'm telling you it works. <laughs> one other tip that was given to me from Instagram from one of my followers was to not give myself my medications cold. A lot of my medications are in the refrigerator. They have to be refrigerated. So you take them out, you prep them. I ended up letting mine sit out for a few minutes, not too long, but just long enough to get that extra chill off of them. When you inject yourself in the medicines cold, it can feel a little funny. And there is one type of medication, I think it's called Menopure, and it does sting just a little bit going in for like 10 seconds. And I found that if I let it sit out and let the medication kind of sit and mix a little bit better, it stung for me a little bit less. So this was an interesting thing that I found. It is this little bee buzzer that vibrates. It was actually kind of expensive. It was like 50 bucks online, but it had all these great reviews for people who are diabetic, who have to give them shots themselves shots every day. They use this, they put it right next to where they're gonna inject. And then it kind of confuses like your nerves to think that that's where the sense is. And then you give yourself a shot on the other side and you don't like feel it. I don't know if this worked very well, but once I did it, I couldn't not do it because I was too afraid that it was working. And then if I didn't do it, then it would hurt me. So if you don't want to go spend $50 on this particular <laughs> beat, you can use anything that has a powerful vibration that you might already have. Another thing you're gonna want to invest in are some amazing ice packs. These are really, really affordable. I linked them down below. I think they were like 10 bucks for the pack. I had slide them in my like pant belt and let it cool my skin while I was preparing the meds. It also comes with like a belly band option too in this pack that I'm gonna link that you can slide it into the belly band and put it right where you want it. It's a great investment. It's also just great to have generally in case someone stubs a toe or you get a headache or something. Another thing you should also buy, I'll link 
link went in the description is a heating pad. This is really more for after your surgery, your egg retrieval surgery day. You're gonna spend some time on the couch just resting and you're gonna want a heating pad to kind of help soothe some of your aches and pains and kind of help move the gas around because I was very, very gassy. We don't love to see it. My next tip is to invest in some really comfortable clothing that you're gonna be able to wear for several weeks. Because you're on so many hormones, you really do swell up, you do look like you're pregnant, and it's very uncomfortable. I lived in full coverage underwear. It just made me feel more comfortable. And a really great option for super comfortable loungewear and undergarments, underwear, bras, is me undies who are sponsoring this the quality of their materials is so soft that when you put them on your body you're like oh this feels like I'm in my own skin it has this micro modal fabric which is sustainably sourced from beech wood and it is softer than soft it's lightweight it's breathable their products are also ethically sourced they pay their workers fairly they have a lot of really great everyday fits and options for pretty much anyone what I love about them also is they have a lot of great patterns and colors like I got this set that has little cacti on it because obviously I'm redoing a house in the desert so I have to be on theme of course they're a super inclusive brand which is a very important thing to me it's like extra small all the way up to 4xl so they can accommodate pretty much every body type go to meundies.com slash Erin Robinson or use code Erin Robinson to treat your butt and get 15% off your first order with me undies Thanks again to MeUndies for sponsoring this video. You need to get an organizer for all of your medications. There's so many little things. There are needles and swabs and gauze and boxes for your needles and medications. And you just need a way to organize them. There was this caboodle thing that I saw online that I wanted to get, but it was like $40, I think. And I was like, I'm never even going to use this again. So I ended up buying a shoe organizer and it was amazing. You can get one for 10 or 15 bucks online. I'll link the one that I got below and I just put it on the bathroom door next to our kitchen, which is where we fixed all the medications every night. And I would just go to my little shoe organizer and pick out what I needed. My next tip is about organizing a calendar to help make all of these medications seem less daunting. You're gonna have a lot of meds. You're gonna have different measurements of how much you get in different times of day. My fertility office kind of listed them in this weird chart that wasn't very easy to understand. So I took all of that and put it in a 30 day calendar so that every day I knew exactly morning and night which medications I would be taking and how much of those medications I would be taking. And then every night I would check off each one of those. It's just really nice to be like, okay, day one is over. And the further you get, the more excited you are to start marking them off. You're supposed to rotate sides with your medication. So if you do your right side for all of your meds on Monday, you're supposed to do your left side with all of your meds on Tuesday. So Matt would put like an R and an L on the, each day so we can kind of keep up with which side we were giving our medication on. Another huge, huge tip, please make sure you do this, is have your nurse, um, see if she or he or she will let you, but have them show you how to administer every single medication and film them doing it. It was about 20 minutes and I just sat there and I watched her take out like fake versions of the medication that they had in like on their shelf and they were like, here's what it looks like. And we filmed her and Matt and I watched that pretty much every day. Another tip, when your nurse is going through all of your medications, have a Sharpie and have her mark little guidelines and guideposts on your belly as to where is the safe zone for you to administer your shots. It is kind of a broad zone, so you shouldn't be super scared of like doing something wrong, but just having the guideposts and the Sharpies and then every couple days I'd take a shower and the Sharpie would come off, I have to like redraw it. I wouldn't recommend drawing with on yourself with Sharpie all the time, but during this process, it was really helpful. There's one medication that comes 
with a very long needle. It's like standard with that medication. They give you a syringe that has a super long needle on it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so scary. Someone on Instagram, thank God, messaged me and she was like, don't give yourself the medication with the big needle. There's a little one that also comes in the, in the pack. There's like so many packs of medications, it's crazy. But she was like, there's also these little tiny heads. Make sure you replace the long needle with the short needle because you don't want to accidentally forget and, just, and stab yourself with this massive needle. Ooh, something else that was really interesting to me is I thought that you had to take your medications at the exact same time every day. Like I had to clear my mornings and clear my evenings to make sure that I took my shot at eight o'clock, but you don't. There's a huge time window for when you can take your medications. Um, I think it's recommended that you take your medications at the same time every day so that you kind of get into the rhythm and then you don't forget to take your meds, but if you take your meds at 8 p.m. typically and you go to dinner with your girlfriends at 7 and you don't get home till 11, my doctor told me I could wait until 11 p.m. to give myself the shots if I forgot or I was out and I couldn't take them. So you have a pretty big window of when you can take them. This is another good one. Do not be afraid of your egg retrieval day. The egg retrieval day is a surgery. They do, they do put you out for like 15 minutes. It's very, very fast. And then you come out of surgery and it all sounds so medical and scary. From someone who's had major surgery, I can tell you, I liked it. <laughs> I had fun. <laughs> I did have an amazing nurse team who cracked me up and we were laughing and we were joking. It's like having like a glass of wine and just drifting off to sleep. It is not scary. I woke up from my surgery, had no idea I had even gone to sleep. I felt nothing. I literally felt nothing. I felt like I had just been woken up from a really good nap and I was like, Ugh but I wanna do this longer. Don't be afraid of surgery day at all. It's kind of the best part, to be honest. Another tip is try to eat watermelon the night before the surgery so that your veins will vasodilate, which means they get a little bit larger. Watermelon is a really great vasodilator, and so it is recommended, just so it's easier for them to find your veins, that you have some watermelon the night before. However, watermelon has a lot of sugar in it, so other than the night before, I was told not to really engage with a lot of carbs and sugar the day before and the week or two after my surgery. Apparently your ovaries are very sensitive to sugar. They're very sensitive to electrolyte balances and salt balances in your body. And if you have too much salt or too little salt or you have a lot of sugar, it can cause your ovaries to swell up, which is like what we don't want to happen. And if you're kind of on the cusp of maybe getting this OHSS thing, if you have a really great keto diet, the likelihood of that happening is a lot lower. So keto, no sugar, no carbs, tons of electrolytes. I drank electrolytes for weeks and I do think it helps me recover more quickly than had I not been drinking them. You are gonna to wanna to limit your travel. Your doctor is gonna be wanting to monitor you via an ultrasound every couple of days. They wanna make sure the medication is working, making sure that they don't need to give you more medication because it's not working that well, or if the medication is working too well, they need to kind of pull you back. So you need to kind of be available and able to kind of go in every couple of days. During the first couple of days of shots, you don't feel too bad, but as as you get further along in the process, you really start to like not feel so great. The hormones kind of set in, your body starts changing, you feel a little uncomfortable. All you wanna do is kind of sit on your couch in your undies watching your favorite show. And if you don't clear your schedule while you're giving yourself the shots, I would definitely take a week or two to recover fully because there is a high risk that you could get something, it's called OHSS, it's ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. It's pretty common, I think it happens in like 30 some percent of women it's where your ovaries are so swollen because it's they're retrieving so many eggs and in my case 18 which is kind of on the lower end of this a lot threshold but you know if you have 16 17 18 eggs your ovaries are going to be pretty swollen what can happen is they can 
I don't want to scare anyone, but you know, they can like flip around and it's really painful and pretty awful and you don't feel great. I did have a small, very mild to moderate case of OHSS and I can just tell you don't feel very good. You're very sore and it's just not, you just don't want to go anywhere. You just want to sit on the couch. I mean, your doctor probably will tell you this as well is it's not recommended that you do a lot of working out or yoga or having a lot of sex. Once you kind of started the shots, maybe three or four days into the shots, they'll tell you you really have to cut back on all of your activities just because, again, your ovaries are swelling, your body is doing a lot hormonally, and they don't want there to be any problems. They don't want you to twist your abdomen and cause some sort of weird thing. That's a technical medical term some sort of weird thing. I will say you can start to feel your ovaries. It kind of feels like, I don't know, like you literally feel like you're like carrying around baskets of eggs inside of you. <laughs> So I ended up like, you know, bracing myself and I'd sit down or get up and it's not painful, it's just a little uncomfortable. One of my biggest tips about IVF and egg retrieval is I wish I had done this whole process a long time ago. With women getting older and in the workforce and our priorities have shifted a little bit, we all wanna have jobs and careers and we're passionate about those. A lot of women are getting pregnant or trying to get pregnant later and as you get older, your eggs decrease significantly not only in number, but more importantly, in quality. So had I done this five years ago, I might have gotten double the amount of high quality embryos that I ended up getting. I ended up getting 18 eggs in total, which is a lot of eggs, but we only ended up with four healthy, viable babies, embryos. They're they're embryos, but hopefully they'll be our babies one day. So if you don't have the cash flow, ask for it as like a graduation present, ask for it as a wedding gift so that you can do this as early as possible or go work at one of those major companies who offer IVF and fertility options for their employees. That's becoming more and more popular. This process was as easy and as hard as I thought it would be. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to get through it. It isn't so physically hard. It is like a little bit challenging, but there's so much mental challenge in this process. Also subscribe to this channel. If you have other questions about my IVF process, I will try my best to answer them down below. Again, make sure you run all of this by your doctor because you just never know. You might be a very different type of person than I am. There is a link down in the description description below where you can get your 15% off your first order of Mandy's. I will possibly be doing another round of egg retrieval in the future. If you have any tips and tricks, let me know in the comments because I definitely don't 